Hi, so I want to talk about this problem really quickly, which is the path problem. And here we have the encoding of a graph and two vertices of that graph. So here we have G as a graph, S and T are vertices of G, and there is an ST path. And by path, we mean that S is a vertex of this graph, and we have a bunch of nodes in between, and eventually we get to T. Okay, so one thing that we could note here is that G could be undirected or directed. It does not matter here. We will be able to show both versions are in P. So what I want to do is to talk about the directed version. And why do I want to talk about the directed version when I just said we can deal with undirected? Well, suppose that we have an undirected graph. Then if I have two vertices A and B that are connected by an edge, then what I can do to make a directed version of it is to convert it into, I still have the two vertices A and B, but I have a, an, an edge that goes both ways. So if I talk about the directed version, that automatically includes the undirected version because I can just convert the undirected one into an equivalent directed one and we are done. So now I want to talk about the uh, path problem. Another thing is that um, path doesn't repeat vertices, although they're, yeah. So here we usually mean simple path, meaning that there is no uh, repeated vertex along the way. So, which won't actually matter for our purposes, but it's just good to have an idea. Okay, so how do we actually solve the path problem? Well, if you know any graph traversal algorithm, you're already done. So I'll just uh, show this with a picture. So let's say that S is right here. Oops make a better S and let's say T is way over here then S may have a bunch of directed edges to a bunch of nodes here and then there may be a bunch of nodes that uh, go to T oops this goes down and maybe T is other ones going out and some going into S it, it won't actually matter for our purposes here so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, put a mark on S. So let's just say that I'm going to put a little dot in the name of the state, uh, not the state, the vertex. And there are many ways to accomplish this with an actual Turing machine, such as in, such as making a copy of the current uh, state that we're looking at. And then what we're going to do is we're going to explore this thing, what is called breadth first search. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all vertices that are one uh, one uh, edge away from S. So we're going to look at all these vertices right here. And from those, we're going to put a little dot on each one of them. And what we're going to do then is now we're going to start looking at the ones that are uh, one more away, aka one that, uh, yeah, so the ones from the blue vertices right here that have that are one away, so they have one edge uh, connecting the blue vertices uh, to some vertex that doesn't already have a blue vertex on it. So if it has a blue t vertex on it, I have a way of getting to it from S. So here, I'm going to see a bunch of vertices right here, something like this, and I'm going to call those the green vertices, and those ones are two away. And again, I'm going to put a mark on each one of these, which represents there is a way to get from S to each one of these. And we're going to carry on in this fashion. And we'll just keep repeating, looking at all the vertices uh, one further along. And uh, if at the very end, until we can't add any more vertices. So if there's one stage where we can't add any more, then we can't visit anymore. So then I, we just see... Um, is T actually marked at that point at the very end? And then we will know that S can actually reach T because there is some way of, of picking some edges to actually go to T. So then what we can do then is uh, try to figure out, well, this clearly is decidable because we can just enumerate the vertices as we go along, but we, I claim that this runs in polynomial time. Well, it runs in, so I say it's in P. 
So it runs in polynomial time because we are always going to be marking one vertex off every single time and we'll never unmark a vertex. So uh, because we mark one vertex each time, that means we will need to only look through the set of edges one time per, per round. So we'll look through all the edges for each of the vertices right here and to find out, okay, is there another ver uh, vertex to mark? So uh, the number of edges times the number of vertices is an upper bound on the runtime. So, uh, so here the runtime is at most the number of vertices times the number of edges. Okay. And, and we will run out of vertices at some point because the graph is finite. And so therefore, we have a runtime that's like this. And the graph, it depends on what you want to actually count for the size of the graph. But we usually represent it by the, the size of the number of, of edges because each of the edges includes the vertex unless you want to include the vertices in addition to that in the case that there are some vertices that don't have edges with them, but beside the point. So uh, here, this actually runs in polynomial time because the number of edges is at most the square of the number of vertices. So this is at most the number of vertices to the power three because the, the edges are at most n squared, where n is the number of vertices, so it's at most a number of, of vertices cubed. And so therefore, uh, maybe I should put a big O on this, but it really doesn't matter. So the number of vertices is basically the size of the graph, in some sense, and therefore we take this to the power of three, well, that's a polynomial in the size of the graph, and so therefore it runs in polynomial time. So hopefully that was interesting, uh, although it was a short proof. Uh, leave comments down below if you have any questions or comments about the path problem. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.